Hello, this video will be for people who have never used Moto before, um, also for people who have never used 3D before. If you've used 3D in some other programs, you can probably jump ahead in certain parts, and I'll tell you when that is. Uh, if you haven't, you should be able to watch this from beginning to end and understand how to use Moto for 3D modeling and animation. Uh, my name is Francis Schmidt. I'm a professor of animation at Bergen Community College. Um, we'll start with what we're looking at here. Uh, this is our screen setup. You have me up here, this corner here. Um, and, and this is very important, we have everything I do on my mouse and keyboard on the screen. Um, this is my mouse. It's a three-button mouse. This is very important. You have to have a three-button mouse. When I click the left button, you see it light up. Right button, middle button, which is also the wheel. And I can see the wheel going up and down, too. Plus, I have a standard keyboard with a keypad. Also very important. And also, if you look on the screen, you can see everything when I click it. Um, that's going to be vital because oftentimes when you're working in a 3D application, you're using your keyboard as a control panel and you're using your mouse, the left, right, and middle buttons at the same time. And the only way you'll ever get fast enough in any 3D program to become successful is by using this technique of one hand on the keyboard, using the control panel, and the other hand on the mouse. Now, let's take a quick look at the application itself, which is Moto, over here. Um, you can see I already have some stuff in here. Um, I'm going to close that. To get what you would normally see when you start up the program. Uh, one important thing, Moto, um, for reasons of historical interest to some, is set up to use a trackball. Because of this, if you run it just the way it comes out of the box, the viewfinder, the way you look around, can become very uncomfortable. So the first thing I'm going to tell everybody to do is go to System, Preferences, and under Preferences, OpenGL. And under OpenGL, turn off trackball rotation. If I click this off and keep that override on, it means when I look around my screen, I look like this. If it's on, which is by default what happens, Preferences, OpenGL, trackball rotation, I start to rotate around my axis looking through the screen, which can be very confusing. So I want to tell people one of the first things you want to do if you're using a three-button mouse and moto is go to System, go to Preferences, Open GL, turn off trackball rotation. Make sure that is not lit. Okay. Um, let's go into the basics of 3D and what we're looking at here. This is the program in which we can do anything imaginable 3D. We can make any of the movies, TV shows, video game characters, all that stuff happens within this one interface. Because of that, there's a lot going on. If you understand some basic concepts about it, though, it will become much easier to deal with. And also, understand what you want to try to do in it. Um, every 3D anything you've ever seen has consisted of five parts. They are modeling, which is making the actual stuff in the 3D world. Texturing and shading, which is giving it color and saying, is it, is it shiny, is it soft, is it bumpy? Animating it, which is moving it around. Cinematography, which is lighting and camera work. And then rendering. Rendering is taking all that stuff and putting it out so you can see the movies and the TV shows and the video games and so on and so forth. This one program does all of that, like most 3D programs do. In this case, you'll notice at the very top of the screen, we have a number of tabs. And these tabs set up the different environments to do that. Each tab is as complicated as an entire program, a program like Photoshop or Illustrator or Microsoft Word. But you generally only work in one at a time. Uh, we're going to start here explaining how the world in 3D is laid out. And then from there, we'll start getting into modeling and then texture and other things as other videos go along. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is switch one of these tabs. I'm going to switch from this first tab we're in called Model to Model Quad, which should look like that on your screen. Um, this is a very traditional layout for a 3D program. Uh, and 
something about 3D programs, it's worth keeping in mind is that one of the reasons they get so much more complicated than other art programs is that extra D. Uh, we deal with 2D, you're watching me now in 2D, all of our surfaces are generally 2D. 3D programs add this extra dimension. I'm going to start from this window to show you a 2D program. We're going to build it up into a 3D program. Um, if I go down here, I'm looking at something that is basically a piece of graph paper. It's a graph paper from high school geometry. If you remember, there was an x-axis, which was left and right, and there was a y-axis, which was up and down. And if I look in the lower corner here, you can see I have y there and x right there. Now, like in that geometry class, I started out with something very simple, something that actually has no shape and no size, has just a location. It is a point. I'm going to put a point here. When I put another point anywhere, I create a line segment. I'm going to put that other point over here. And then, when I put another point anywhere except on that line segment, I'm going to get a shape, in this case a triangle. Everything you've seen in all the movies and television and video games and all the 3D stuff you've ever done is built this way. Points are laid out in space, they're connected with lines, and the lines are connected into polygons, the simplest shape of which is a triangle. Now, where this starts to change from a 2D program to a 3D program is how do I push a point back or forth in this window? And it's actually a sort of trick question. I can't. It's not possible. What I need is I need some way of looking down on this triangle to figure out how to put something back here, I need another piece of graph paper. A piece of graph paper that would show me the top of something rather than the front of something. That's right here. This piece of graph paper here, which says top in it, if I click, now allows me to work into that third dimension. See that? And now I have another problem. If I want to get something on the side over here, I need another piece of graph paper. So if we were looking at the front, which is this window way down the corner there, then we look at the top and fold that up, that's over here. Then we look at the side and fold that out, that's over here. And once I've done all that mathematical stuff, what I really want to do is see what it looks like out here where our parallel lines meet in the distance, which is wrong. That happens up here. Now, this is one of the reasons why 3D programs become so much more complicated. By adding that one extra dimension, I need many more ways of looking at the information to present it in the way we see the world, which again, it's worth pointing out, is incorrect. What we see here in this window, our parallel lines will meet in the distance, which is wrong. Mathematically, we know our parallel lines all actually never meet, which is correct in these three windows over here. Now we're going to go back into the model window, which is where you generally start this program. One of the reasons I wanted to start with that piece showing you the three dimensions and the various graphs is that if you look around here, you'll notice those pieces of graph paper pop up all over the place. They're going to become very important to what we do next.